Have you ever wondered how you can step-by-step -step debug smart contracts or maybe you've used Remix for that? Then this video is for you. In this video, I want to show you two ways how you can debug smart contracts using Truffle Debugger, as you can see in the little preview. First, I want to use the Truffle Debugger in a local Truffle project using some smart contracts that are in this Truffle project and the local development chain. And then I want to show you a really convenient way how you can debug smart contracts on mainnet where the smart contracts are automatically fetched from Etherscan. Hi, if you don't know me, my name is Thomas. I'm CTO at Morpher, where I use these technologies on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm on a mission to educate a million people about blockchain development. So if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe and bell button. And now let's have a look what's in the code. The code that we're using in this video was written from the ground up in a previous video, which is now linked somewhere up there. And you can also find it in the description down below. And you can find the code copy and paste style on ethereum-blockchain-developer.com in the mini projects section. Now, before we're getting started, let me quickly walk you through the code and then let's place a bug in there, which we then you know, need to debug. I have uh, a classical truffle um, project over here. I have installed the Open Zeppelin contracts, npm i open zeppelin at open zeppelin slash contracts. And uh, I have a contract called my token. And this contract my token is basically the template that is available on the Open Zeppelin website. Uh, it has one award item functionality. It creates an ERC721 token as one award item functionality. And there is a bug in there, which we uh, pretend we didn't see. And we are having the migration file, which basically migrates this. And then I also added a test, but that is uh, not relevant for now. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start uh, Ganache. You can install Ganache, npm-i-g for global, uh, sorry, npm install g for global Ganache. It will install Ganache 7. I'm currently having Ganache 702 installed. I'm going to start this now. Ganache, and it should start Ganache 702. It's fairly uh, fast and it gives you 10 accounts to play with. And the reason why I start Ganache and not use the internal network from Truffle is because I want to connect to an ex actually node, uh, RPC node that is running and you can see the commands. And the other thing that I'm going to do is, or did was uh, in the Truffle config file under the networks tab, I just uncommented the development network. And I saw that you can use WebSockets, which is absolutely recommended normally, but I personally had a few problems with WebSockets that I'm going to show you at the end of the video. Uh, so if you run into connection problems with WebSockets where Truffle gives you an error, just uncomment it for now. Otherwise, for uh, interacting with nodes, it's definitely recommended to use WebSockets. Okay, so how we go about this? I'm going to start the Truffle console because I like interacting with the Truffle console directly. So Truffle console network development that gives us a nice console to use our smart contracts with. And then we are going to deploy the smart contracts and then we are going to interact with our smart contract. And then hopefully it doesn't work or well, hopefully it works. But if it doesn't, then I will show you how you can debug this. And then we are going into the debugger and we are going to use it. And I will show you how to use the debugger and why it's so advantageous. So let's do that first. See the migration is running and you can see on the right side, the Truffle, uh, sorry, Ganache is having the transactions. Everything worked. And now we are going to award an item to our, one of our accounts. So I'm calling, I'm going, getting the current token instance with my token dot deployed and then i'm saying token award item to one account and then this would normally be the token url i'm just typing in anything just to get something up and running okay we see there is an there is a, an error uc721 token already minted uh it exited after consuming all gas um, and then it says here, error out of gas, which is slightly misleading in this case. So it used up the gas before it actually got to this error, which is strange, but 
more on this in a second. So what you would normally do if you see an out of gas error is, wait, I should provide more gas. Let's just try more gas. Maybe it works. So you start the same transaction again and just say like, give it the maximum gas. So I'm just giving it like 8 million for here or whatever 6 million it is. So it still has the same error. Token already minted. That's strange. And it even says over here, there's a runtime error revert. Uh, reason is ERC721 token already minted. So this transaction hash definitely doesn't work. Something is going on and we need to find out what is going on. So how can you do this? What is the thing that you need to start the debugger is the transaction hash. So I'm going to copy this one over here. I just highlight it with double click, double mouse click, and then right click. And then I say debug to start the debug environment with the transaction hash. So what is happening now is the debugger is going to connect to the blockchain node and is running the debug trace transaction command to actually get information about why this transaction uh, errored out. And what then happens is that Truffle actually shows you where exactly in the code are you currently with the execution within the execution of this transaction. And you can do this step by step. You see here, there are a couple of commands. Enter is the last command entered. You can step over a current instruction. You can step into a current instruction. You can step out, step next. You can set breakpoints. You can print variables and print the stack trace. I found this extremely useful, especially if you have large amounts of contracts. And with Morpho, where I work for, we have uh, quite a smart contract ecosystem right now, which is fairly large. And if there's anything happening which is unexpected, you can easily set a breakpoint and uh, just like before this, the error happens and just continue until the breakpoint, which I'll show you in a second. So what I usually do is, uh, in this case, it's something that is fairly small. You just hit return until you get to that error. So first of all, we increment the token ID. That seems to work fine. Then we get the current token ID. Seems to work fine. Then we mint an item. Hmm? Let's see if that works too. So the, icon, uh, the item does not exist yet. Okay. But we already see this is the error where it happens, but not this time. So we, we went over this instruction and actually go to the next one. Then we are going to increase the balances of the user. Then uh, we set the owner of that particular token ID to that user. Then we emit an event. Then we call like the an after token transfer hook. And then, hmm, strange, we call another mint. Somebody just duplicated that line probably, or there's an, an error. Obviously, your unit tests should catch this. And obviously, this is a completely made up example. But if you have a large ecosystem of smart contracts and you don't know exactly why a particular number uh, added up to whatever result it is, or you have an error that you cannot explain, this is the way to go, for me at least. So instead of importing everything to Remix, I usually try to stay in the environment where I am anyway. And we're using the Truffle framework for our work. And uh, this one has helped me a really great bit to actually do the debugging. So if you go into that function over here, then we see uh, it goes into the exist functionality and is the owner of this token ID not address zero. So let's just see what it actually is, variables. And the owners is not the address zero of the first token ID because the token ID over here is one and the owners is of one is already an account. So we know this one is going to error out now. So this is going to be false. And this is going to be the location of the error token already minted. And if you want to set any breakpoints, then we could do this as well. We say like, wait a second, uh, on line 282, there's the error happening. Let's set a breakpoint on line 281. So let's add B, ERC 721.sol281. Okay, which one did I mean? I meant this one, of course, not the interface. So B, 
going to set a breakpoint now and then I'm going to reset everything and I'm going to continue until the breakpoint. Let's just see what happens over here. So we are the first time in there and we can, we are the second time there. And now we can see if we can step into those commands and see again, wait, this is again the same problem that we had. Balances is one, owners of one is already this, this address or this account and the token ID one. So this will clash, this will not work. Yeah, there are certain times where you actually want to debug a transaction that happened where you don't have the actual source code right away or it happened on mainnet or on Rinky B or Robsten or any of the other test nets. Now, there's a really fast and really convenient way to actually achieve debugging with Truffle in combination with Ganache without even having access to any Infura nodes or any private Geth nodes that you set up and so on. And I'm going to show you how that works because you can fork with Ganache and you can fetch the source codes with Truffle from Etherscan if they are uploaded there. So if you have uh, validated smart contracts on Etherscan, having the Truffle documentation open here. And when you look at the Truffle command reference, you can see there is an option called fetch external or X. This allows the debugger to download source from source verification services to debug transactions involved in external contracts. When used, a transaction hash is required, okay, and maybe abbreviated with X. And that means when you uh, use this fetch external um, in combination with the debugger, then it will start to try and download the source code from Etherscan. So let's say, for example, you have a transaction hash over here that was uh, a Uniswap V2 swap. Um, and what it is here, it's not really uh, important to know, but it interacted with this smart contract with the Uniswap V2 router. And you see that's a verified source. So the contract here is uploaded to Etherscan. You don't need to download the source yourself. It can actually fetch this from Etherscan itself. And then you need a node that actually supports the debug trace transaction RPC call and their Ganache as you covered, uh, which is an interesting combination with uh, Truffle to use because you can actually fork a network. And when you just use the fork parameter, then it will by default fork uh, the mainnet from the latest block. And then you have a node which forks the mainnet, but you can use the debug trace transaction call. Now, let me show you how that works. First of all, we need to start Ganache with the fork parameter. Let me make this a tad bigger so you see what's happening here. And then the fork chain is the Ethereum mainnet via Infura in this case. Okay. And it's listening to localhost 8545 as usual. And you get still your uh, 10 accounts and everything. But when you start to interact with smart contracts, it will start to fetch the previous uh, transaction data that happened with the previous blocks uh, concerning the transaction hash. So now you can actually go in and say truffle debug and then you say fetch external and then we are going to use a transaction hash that happened. In this case I'm going to use the exact same transaction hash that I picked out here what I basically did was I went to the block, I went to etherscan.io, view transactions, and I picked the first one uh, where I know that this is with a verified smart contract. And basically I saw that the method is known. So etherscan must know that this is a verified smart contract. doesn't matter what kind of uh, transaction hash it is, as long as the smart contract is verified on etherscan. All right, then we are going to insert this over here and then we need to connect to our Ganache node over here. So we say dash dash URL, HTTP, localhost 8545. And now let's see what happens. First of all, it will hopefully connect to Ganache over here. And yep, it did. It starts the debugger and you can immediately see debug trace transaction call but then it will also start to download the source. It might take a while. Uh, the first time I started this, 
took a minute or two until it actually started to download the sources but it's definitely worth it to wait so i'm going to pause the video here and when this is done gonna start it again just just wait here um, if it looks like it doesn't do anything it took around five minutes to actually start gathering the sources so i don't know what's happening in between there but it's definitely worth the wait and now it has uh, gathered the sources and compiled them uh, from etherscan and then it connected to ganache and got the rest of the code which it didn't have in a cache so it connected to infura to get the rest of the blocks that are not in the cache yet and then it basically started the debugger so we know where we are now we are at the uniswap v2 router o2 was a uniswap v2 uh, swap and we can uh, step by step go through the actual transaction as it happened on mainnet so i think that is pretty cool you can also see the variables involved and everything else as usual with yeah the debugger so if you haven't tried this yet definitely give it a try it also shows why it's so important to upload your sources to etherscan and verify your smart contracts and i think this is one of the main uh, differentiators from truffle to any other uh, framework out there that you can basically just uh, start your debugger either for your own projects or uh, with external sources this is such a game changer for me and yeah give it a try and now let's wrap it up the other thing that I wanted to show you now is what happens when you turn on the web sockets and this is going to be interesting now because it doesn't happen always so let me just get out of here with Control c go back to the truffle console we are going to connect to truffle uh, to ganache now via web sockets and i'm going to get the same transaction hash where is it over here so I'm going to debug this transaction hash over here and every once in a while it gets stuck with an error message and i just wanted to show you this error message in case you're getting the same uh, just try to connect without web sockets starting the truffle debugger and you can see over here uh, it couldn't connect to node on web sockets and i don't know exactly why this happens but it does and the fix for me is just not connect via web sockets okay i hope you found this uh, video helpful uh, check out the posts on ethereum-blockchain-developer.com where i'm showing a lot more of these videos and obviously if you like the content and you want to see more of this subscribe and give it a like this would be greatly appreciated and i hope i will see you in one of the other videos see you